For 25 years, Jeep had the off-road industry largely to themselves. Ooh, that Imagine they look that, good, over boy. two decades of loyal, almost fanatical customers that would Damn, get your skipping. brand tattooed on themselves. <laughs> I mean, what other brands have that kind of I don't, I, hold up. Let me understand. Where did the duck thing come from? Seriously. Like, who started the duck thing? Like, where did that actually come from? That's what I want to know. Like, what did the duck thing come from? And why did it start? Because I don't understand. Because I don't understand why people are riding around with a whole bunch of ducks and they got their windshield on their dash. But, hey, each is on, hey. I, don't, I ain't going to knock the next man, but I don't understand it. So if y'all can help me understand that thing, because I'm not riding around with no ducks on my windshield. Cache. You know what I'm saying? Maybe like anyway, Harley Davidson, Iron Man Triathlon, but like you're certainly not going to see a lot of people getting Stanley mugs <laughs> tattooed on their thigh. Okay, well, that's not What's strictly up with the Stanley true. Mug so the Ford thing, Bronco, too. one of the last old school American ain't nameplates, died in the 1990s good, and came back in 2021. The Chevy Blazer is I don't back care about them blazers. in the same way that ABBA is back. It's a little bit of a disappointment, at least from an off-road standpoint. So really for like 20 something years, Jeep was competing yes, with sir. the Forerunner in terms of the Forerunners do look good off-road space. Uh, I'm a, a Tacoma point, man. About 15 years ago when if a Jeep I'm going to get a Toyota, us, the vehicle that was I'm most cross driving with the Wrangler didn't even have wheels or tires. Which I had it wasn't one even before. a car, it was a speedboat. That's right, internal studies showed that folks were cross shopping a speedboat with the Wrangler. But a lot has <laughs> happened in those 15 years from back when folks were cross shopping Wranglers with boats, I suppose. I mean, we've gone through 14 generations of iPhone. I was 12 when a Jeep representative <laughs> told us that. I would argue now we are in an era where off-roading and off-road vehicles are more popular and more impressive than they ever have been. This generation of Wrangler, the JL sure. Wrangler, debuted in 2018. And since its debut, the number of iconic nameplates that have returned to the off-road space is truly astounding. There have been so many off-road vehicles introduced since the JL Wrangler came out in 2018. I had to write them down and forget, but <laughs> that let's man start with right one down. Ford Bronco. First one since like 1996, and They're the first open top Bronco in something Broncos like 14 years. Broncos are nice. An all new Don't get Land me wrong, Rover man. Defender. I know That's I'm right. a Jeep guy. Was seen in the US but in Broncos the 1990s. are we also nice. Got the brand new 250 series Land Cruiser, which is smaller and more affordable. We've got an all new Forerunner coming. Forerunner I mean, looking let's put good. This in perspective. Back in 2009, an you see what I mean? Size truck let me, like this. Let me let me pause it right quick. Do you not see what I mean? Like the updates to the other vehicles, the off-road vehicles, is so nice. Like Jeep, what are we missing? Come on, I know it's I know history but update the body we can have one form of like old school jeep okay don't take that away but we can have another form of the modern body style you know what i'm saying put a little curbs on it man curbs are in <laughs> but anyway man just you know come on man make a style for the you know history buffs and make a style for the modern people you know you understand what i'm saying just make it and now we've got vehicles like the ranger raptor which has two locking differentials the silverado zr2 which has two locking differentials same with the at4x the tacoma trd pro the tacoma trail hunter i mean heck you can get a bronco raptor on 37 inch tall tires mm from the factory. And that's before we even factory. talk about not only vehicles, but entire manufacturers that didn't exist selling cars back in 2018. I'm talking vehicles like the Ineos Grenadier and the Rivian R1S and R1T. And then of course you got weird stuff like the Cybertruck. And then if we go to the full size segment. <laughs> I, I'm in, uh, as you know, I'm in South Carolina. Shout out to the Carolina people. But in a way, I've seen two cyber trucks already. It looks good, but it's one thing that I've seen that I notice when I see a cyber truck. 
if it gets dirty, the cyber truck looks like junky. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to explain, but if it get dirty, it's hard. Like it, it just look like you, you know, when you see like a dirty mirror, that's basically what I see. Like it just look crazy. I mean, folks, it is just nuts out there. So the question remains, has Jeep done enough with the Wrangler to keep it relevant? Throughout it all, the Wrangler formula has remained pretty much the same for six years, 10 years, 15, 80 years, let's be honest, <laughs> since this vehicle came off the battlefield in World War II. Up front it's is a choice of gasoline for years. engines, depending on the decade that you're looking at your CJ or Wrangler, but they've all have had a solid front axle, a beam front axle. Every variant of CJ and Wrangler have had a windshield that folds down. Every CJ and Wrangler has had a top that comes off in one way or another. Same, Same thing, thing with the doors. Same they all thing. have had four wheel drive. But I get it. Not entirely true actually. There was a period there where they offered a two wheel drive Wrangler. That's a fun fact that's rather depressing, but most of them have been four wheel drive with a ladder frame underneath and a solid axle out back. And they've all been two doors until 2007 when almost all of them became four doors. But look, the point is the formula has been the same for almost a century now. So with vehicles <laughs> like the Bronco and the Rivians and the Ineos, how has Jeep responded to keep the Wrangler relevant? Well, engines are a big thing that they've done. So for a period there between like 2007 and well, 2018, you had a choice of engines as long as you liked V6s. If you like six cylinders and the V formation, the Wrangler was your vehicle, but eventually Jeep wised up and they put a two liter turbo underneath the hood. Mm -hmm. And then they put a hybrid underneath the hood and then they put a V8 underneath yes, the hood. So they haven't really adapted the architecture all I that think much. they should make the V8 the standard. And all the onslaught new four wheel drives, but they have changed the Asking engine. Now, too much. the four cylinder turbo, <laughs> powerful, lot of torque, kind of a weird power band in my opinion, and sounds like a Dyson that's sucking up some cat hair. It just doesn't work for me. The V8 is incredible, but super expensive. The plug-in hybrid is what Jeep wants you to buy, but it's uh, also super expensive. And this is the engine you want. It's actually the engine in this vehicle that Secret, our videographer Alex, just bought. It's a 3.6 liter V6. So maybe they were onto something with that V6 to begin with. But yeah, I mean, look, in a world where, you know, you've, you've got people rock crawling Subaru Foresters. Jeep had to do something <laughs> to respond to this crazy off-road thing. And what they Don't chose let the to Subaru do for the most part was go Jeep crazy Wrangler. with engines. They don't hear that. Now that's not to say that Jeep hasn't done anything to update the JL Wrangler to meet the new competition. They have refreshed it for the 2024 model year, which this one is. It's got a different grill up front. It's got more safety a tech. It's got grill. Connect 5. Come on, man. Some of them have power seats. They We've can't be for real. We've got side airbags with more like availability. We got new wheels. So Come new on, colors. man. So, yeah, they are tweaking things, but no really monumental shifts in the Wrangler in about six years. I think that this new Uconnect 5 system is definitely a high point. Yeah. It's this massive, like 12.3 inch right screen. Right about that. It has basically every function in the vehicle incorporated in this display. It's fast, it's easy to use, and it's very effective. I also like that they have retained physical controls for stuff like the heated steering wheel and the heated seats and the fan, which is blaring kind of crazy there. And of course, you know, your window switches are all over here, auxiliary switches on this model. So like, I like the physical controls. That's a big plus. A downside for me, still the seats. So this vehicle is a pretty well-equipped Sport S, and we do have lumbar control on the driver's side, which is great. Older Wranglers didn't have that, but on the passenger side, still no lumbar control, which is just some silly cost cutting. And I'm still not convinced that the driver's seat goes back far enough for folks over like 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 At six feet tall, my driving position, my seat is all the way back in this vehicle. I do think the materials are quite nice now. We've got this cool finish across the okay. dash. That's the nice material, Mike. The material, like it's a pretty nice place to spend time. Man, Plastic it look everywhere, nice who cares? Quality the on the seat. Down. Stitching look quality, great. Still better than the Bronco. Maybe not as good as like a Forerunner, but a decent interior overall. Let's talk about how this Wrangler drives. You know, there is a perception online that Wranglers drive like a wheelbarrow full of manure. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have drove a Gladiator and 
stock gladiator was it was rough it felt like the death steer was happening in the back end you understand what i'm saying my tj when i first bought it it was like driving um it was like being on a roller coaster at six flags or carowinds that's how that's how i felt but when i upgraded the suspension and everything so it rides a little smoother but it's still not like it's not driving luxury of course it's not luxury i'm sure the jl two doors and four doors probably a little bit better but that gladiator suck i'll tell you that now that is not true look the solid front axle does have its compromises it, it really does and there are a certain number of g people that are so loyal to it just like there are people that are really loyal to records um, is it better than independent front suspension in a small hey, number of it's circumstances? Other vehicles out yes. There. Overall, not not really, because it's just it links the two wheels together, and it's hard to get road manners exactly where you'd want them for a comfortable driving experience. But really, it's not an uncomfortable vehicle to drive. It's fairly quiet. The steering is okay for a circulating ball. The ride is surprisingly comfy, and the power in all configurations is actually surprisingly good. Even this V6 has nearly 290 horsepower and it's made into an eight speed automatic, nearly a $5,000 option bad, by the though. way, but it, the eight speed is a fantastic Damn, transmission like and the two liter and the <laughs> other engines available are just as powerful. The so got it actually like drives surprisingly well. Does it drive as well as a new Land Cruiser? The on-road dynamics aren't there. Does it drive as well as a Bronco? The honor dynamics aren't quite there, but it's not a bad thing to drive, especially compared to old Jeeps. It really is pretty good. In my mind, what has drawn millions of people to the river over the last several Jeep. decades is a rather it simple trash formula. When I first For a got relatively it. small amount of really money, was, man. you can buy a driving experience which is completely unique. Let's be honest, the vast majority of new cars are the same blobby crossovers and they all kind of drive the same. And unless you have three, four, five hundred thousand dollars for a supercar, most new car driving experiences are kind of eh. They're always good, but not great. Except for the Wrangler. You see, for a small amount of money, you could buy a Wrangler, which pull the doors and the roof and fold the windshield and have an experience <laughs> that's completely unheard of. And the key to that was for a relatively small amount of money. Now, Jeep would tell you that the Wrangler has stayed price competitive through its 2024 model year. They would say the base price is 31980 That is less God than the Bronco. Damn. They are right about that. But they are also very wrong about that because go out into the real world and try <laughs> to find a at in the $30,000 territory. Hell no. Nah. I did, and Alex did with this Wrangler, which is an interesting story. So I went ahead and looked in a 50-mile radius. There are eight Colorado, I was nice. brand new Jeep Wranglers for sale right now. Let me, let me give you some numbers. 23 of those are over $100,000 MSRP. Mm -hmm. 312 of those are between sixty dollars and $70,000. Guess how many have an MSRP of under forty grand? Two. Hell That's no. right. Of 850 brand new Wranglers for sale in our area right now, two have an MSRP of under $40,000. These are no longer cheap vehicles in the real world. They simply are not. Too this is goddamn an expensive, expensive piece of equipment. Let me tell you about this one. So our videographer, producer, and TFL bike extraordinaire, Alex Lightman, just bought that brand new Wrangler. And that's a Sport S, which if you know Wranglers, is kind of near the bottom of the Wrangler lineup. So there's the Sport, which is like no power windows, maybe find it at a rental car agency my sport bad. s my which gives you power windows on. and then you've got vehicles like the sahara and the rubicon and the willies and the 392 rubicon i mean it just goes up from up from there so sport s is kind of near the bottom of the wrangler lineup it's a two-door which saves you quite a bit of money over the four-door and let's see what the sticker on alex's sport s is fifty two thousand two hundred and seventy five dollars for a two-door Sport S. Now, granted, it is a very nicely equipped Jeep. It has heated seats and oh, heated steering wheel no. and LED headlights and fog lights and the trailer tow group. 52,000? It's got the safety group, so he's got uh, park oh, sense and that trip. kind of stuff. But still, 52 they grand trip. for a non-Rubicon is pretty nuts. Now, Alex didn't pay 52 grand because he's got some major cojones, and with money on the hood, he was able to get this vehicle for about $10,000 off. But Jeep's huh? pricing model right now is just 
out of whack. How the hell he pulled that off? A couple years ago, I bought, bought a JL, same generation as this, granted pre-facelift, Willy mm -hmm. Sport. So it had the nice wheels, it had a limited slip, still manual windows. It was 30 Basically the same grand. vehicle. And then in 2016, I bought a Sport S, manual transmission, power windows, a little bit less well equipped for this, but it was like 32 grand. So that's a 20 grand difference between my 2016 Wrangler Sport S and Alex's 2024. Now Jeep will tell you, well, it's got all the safety equipment and you connect five, but I would argue <laughs> that the skippy. bones of the Jeep are not different enough to justify that price increase. And I think that Jeep needs to do more for less, which is a frustrating thing if you're a Jeep executive. I think we need a vehicle that's, that's the way I feel for twenty nine thousand like, dollars that will get you Apple CarPlay and nothing else. And I don't know if that's possible years, in this world, like, but that's what would sell and that's what would elevate the range. Give me above something the new than the size, the technology, and huge safety numbers stuff. of uh, you know, off-road or sea state. Folks, let me know what you think in the comment sexy. section below. Big thank you to Alex like, for letting me look at see a me take a dump on his Jeep, even though I love it. It is a very cool spec. And as always, head over to alltfl.com for more Jeep. Wrangler and everything else Pause. reviews. But as I know, just make it sassy, baby. That's all we need. That's all we need. Shout out TFL. Shout out Tommy Man. Great video. I like their stuff. Check them out if you are uh, interested in more videos of them. And check me out if you're interested in more videos of me. But anyway, I'll see y'all on next, Mike. Peace. <laughs>